Hey, this is Mike Lindsay from Vinyl MX, and we're gonna do a quick video today on who's in and who's out for the 2022 AMA Pro Motocross Championship season opener at Fox Raceway. So who's injured, who will miss out the race because of that who's injured but riding through it, and then you know who's returning. We're gonna go down through the teams based off the OEM, so cover the factory teams, and then a couple of the support teams that people may have questions about. So starting with Honda, we're gonna go straight to the top of the HRC Honda squad, Ken Roxon will be at the opening round, returning from his sabbatical, layoff, time off, whatever you want to call it. He seems content with whatever he figured out about himself off the bike. Um, he's going to do the full season. It seems to be all good so far. Chase Sexton, of course, healthy, good to go. And then both of the Lawrence brothers lining up healthy, good to go. Albeit there has been some question marks around Jet because we didn't see him really post anything after Salt Lake. Nobody really saw him riding and testing. Um, up until the Tuesday media day before this opening round. A uh, little rumor they may, the foot injury or ankle injury from Salt Lake may have been a little worse than expected, may have taken him off the bike a little bit of time, but all seems to be good now. Maybe a little less prep than usual, but he'll be there, line up, all good. Uh, support teams. Most of Honda's support teams are Supercross only. The MCR team is, so you will not see any of their riders during outdoors. Uh, the Phoenix Honda squad is normally Supercross only, albeit one of their riders, Colin Park, plans on doing about six nationals on a 450 during the middle of the season. Uh, Ty Lube is Supercross only. Firepower Honda is supposed to be Supercross only, but we've heard they have a new signing. We may see a rider for them race four to five outdoor nationals on a 450. Uh, anything beyond that, smaller team privateer, we don't have a great amount of info on. So moving on OEMs to the Kawasaki's. Starting at the top, the Monster Energy Kawasaki 450 Factory Squad. Jace Anderson coming off his best Supercross season. Outdoor prep seems to be good. He's been labeled as the early winner of the Stopwatch Nationals, being he's pretty much the only guy we've really big top name we've seen riding in Southern California. Jason seems to be running on all cylinders. Good to go. Uh, as the second guy in the team has gone a little bit weird, though, Adam Cianciarello is sitting out the entire outdoor season from his shoulder surgery. He could be back on the bike, we've heard, as late as June, but they're just opting to take off the entire outdoors and get healthy. I mean, Adam's been hurt enough times in a row. I think it's that time for him to just get get everything good. So they need a fill-in. Um, there were some rumors on who's going to be. They end up picking Joey Savacci, but he was coming off a knee injury and knee surgery early in Supercross season. Basically, when he returned to riding and testing two weeks ago with the team, as far as we're aware, that was his first day back on the bike. Did media day, everything seemed to be progressing good, but the team has announced he will not actually race the opening round, um, and it's fairly vague. It doesn't say he'll be back at round two, round three. It just says he'll basically be back when he's when the knee is good to go. Uh, as far as we are aware, he has not re-injured it. It's just they do not feel like he is ready, or him himself did not feel like he is ready to go racing yet on that knee. So might be two, might be three, maybe four rounds before we see him. We don't know. That'll be basically a week-to-week -week case. Pro Circuit Monster Energy Kawasaki 250 squad uh, has five riders. We will not see all five on the gate at Fox Raceway. So Cameron McAdoo, good to go. Joe Shimoda, good to go. Uh, Jet Reynolds, not good to go. Has not been released to ride yet. We will not see him on the gate at the opening round. Austin Forkner, good to go, albeit we have heard that a week ago he had a crash and has, has a, it sounds like a torn labrum, uh, so a shoulder injury but is going to ride through it. So he sustained an injury between Supercross and Outdoors, but is going to go ahead and line up and just, you know, do what he can. And then lastly on the team, Seth Hamaker returning from injury. All good to go. Seems to be back on the bike and healthy for quite a while. Outside of that, there isn't really any major Kawasaki teams um, to really report on. So going over to Yamaha, starting off with the Monster Energy Star Yamaha Racing 450 Factory Team. A small edit right here, we originally had in this feature that Dylan was lining up, but as we are about to publish this video, Dylan Ferrandis has come out and announced he will be unable to line up at the opening round. We have an individual video on that, but nope, no number one play, no Dylan at the opening round. Uh, hopefully we see him by maybe about halfway point of the season after his surgery. Eli Tomac as well, coming in not fully prepared, albeit there's been a lot of speculation this week if he is racing or not. Eli has said over and over he's racing. The team said at media day he's racing. He's in the press conference he's racing. Um, but he did have a knee injury at the end of Supercross, decided to take some time off. He was in California testing a little over a week and a half ago. So he's been here, been going through all the, the motions, all the effort. 
They just said he didn't want to participate in the media day. It was two 30 minute sessions. You know, Eli's, Eli's got his program. Uh, not everybody participated in media day. So, but he is the biggest name. So it's a little bit of a shocker as far as we're aware. He's just still on program and will line up at the opening round. The third rider on the team who's been brought up from the 250s, of course, is Christian Craig, who had a deal that puts him on the factory Yamaha 450 squad for the outdoor season. Coming off his Supercross championship, everything is all good there. Moving down to the 250 team for the Monster Energy Star Yamaha group, there's quite a bit of movement going on. So Justin Cooper is returning from injury after missing out on the entire Supercross season and the title defense. He is back. It sounds like he's had a few good amount of weeks on the bike now. He looked really solid at media day, so he is returning. However, his teammate in a similar position, Colt Nichols, who also got hurt, did not get to do his tile defense. He got back riding, but only in about the last week or so. So they are skip he is skipping the opening ground. We don't have a timetable for him. We don't know if it's gonna same kind of similar Savachi. We think it's week to week. You know, miss two, three rounds until he feels like he can do, you know, safely do the 30s and stuff. And then we should see him back on track. But he is riding, just sing out. Um, as far as we're aware, Nate Thrasher is healthy. He was not at the media day, but we heard he is good to go. Um, you have two rookies incoming, Nick Romano, Matt LeBlanc. The goal is for Romano to race the entire outdoor championship. So he will be coming in from the amateurs, make his pro debut, and race all 12 rounds. While the goal for Matt LeBlanc is is supposedly to just do the first two rounds to get experience, then still go race Loretta's this year, and then do the last four after Loretta's, which with the new rules they introduced a couple years ago, you can race a couple pro nationals. As long as you don't score more than 25 points, you can still go race Loretta's that same year. We've seen guys now start to do that dabble in one or two nationals, so LeBlanc will do it as well. Um, and then Jeremy Martin is going to be out the entire summer and we will actually never see him on a star racing Yamaha again. It's been well publicized that he has signed with the Muckoff FXR club MX Yamaha team for next year. He finally had shoulder surgery after injuring his shoulder now two years in a row, three or four times. So he is missing out on the entire summer, um, and will not line up for the star Yamaha squad. Uh, Levi Kitchen is also returning from injury and is in for the entire outdoor championship for that team. So that wraps up the massive star Yamaha team. So moving on to Club MX. Club MX is going to have a little bit of a shaky start to the season in terms of riders as Enzo Lopes will miss the first two or three rounds due to a surgery he had between Supercross and Motocross. He had some... Um, something impeding blood flow and like having, you know, nerves in his hand and arm going to sleep. He had that fixed down Brazil, but he won't be able to race the first two or three rounds because of it. Uh, we all know Phil Nicoletti got hurt at Atlanta. His injury is going to hold him back until it sounds like around Millville, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, he is getting cleared to ride fairly soon, but we heard the goal for him to return is Millville, which he would be 450 class. Um, Enzo is 250 class. Alex Martin is healthy, good to go on the 450. Uh, the team will also have their in-house trainer, Brandon Share, racing a few rounds. We don't, or the whole season, we don't know if he's on 250 or 450. We'll have to see on the when we show up for sign sheet. We believe he's on 250F. Uh, other 450 riders, Garrett Marchbanks is moving up from the 250 to the 450 for the Club MX team. He is lining up at the first round, but we also know that his Salt Lake. A uh, super cross injury was not just a simple dislocated shoulder that he also sounds like he may have a torn labrum or something major torn in his shoulder and has not been riding. Did a photo shoot day and that's really about it. So he's coming into the first round. I don't think he's done more in a couple laps. So it's, it's going to be a little touch and go for Garrett for the first couple of rounds of the season. <clears throat> the team's other two riders, Nick Thurry and Jay Sowen were super cross only. So we will not see them at all during the outdoor nationals. Other teams such as Rock River, we don't really know if they're even racing or if they just have a couple guys they're transporting, um, but that really kind of covers up the major Yamaha teams. The other one is the Solitaire Yamaha team, Nuclear Blast team. Uh, Robbie Wageman was planning on doing a couple outdoors, got hurt at Salt Lake, will not be able to. We believe that Surratt will be doing the first couple on one of their bikes, um, but the team is, once again, usually a super cross only, so no, no major outdoor support for them. Moving into the KTMs, the Red Bull KTM squad is, of course, had the most movement probably this season coming into the outdoors. We have the number five, Ryan Dungey, returning from retirement. It was announced as the first two rounds. Ryan verbally said over and over, he is in for all 12, so really cool to see. He is joined by the other nine-time champ, the nine-time world champ, Antonio Caroli, for the opening two rounds. 
Uh, from speaking to him, it sounds like he'll do the first two, take a few rounds off, um, and then he actually would like to do a couple in the middle of the season. His plan is to do destinations later this year. We do not expect to see Crowley pull the full 12, regardless of how these opening two go. Uh, also on the team is Aaron Plessinger returning from injury in Supercross. He is been healthy, back on the bike for a while, and will race all 12 Outdoor Nationals. Um, the other member of the team, Cooper Webb, of course, has decided to sit out the Outdoor Championship um, for personal reasons, a little bit of health, concussion, you know, issues with bike, however you want to label it. We believe it's a combination of things, but we will not see Webb during the Outdoor National Championship as far as we're aware, unless he wants to try for Team USA. Uh, he may do a couple rounds late in the season, but we believe that it's just going to be him taking the summer off. On the 250, Maximus Volan is returning from his thumb injury. He will line up for all 12 Outdoor Nationals starting this weekend. Uh, we do know he's been able to ride quite a bit the last couple weeks, so seems to be fairly good to go at this point. Uh, other KTM teams racing, uh, we have the BBMX KTM squad, formerly known as Rocky Mountain KTM. Uh, their entire lineup they used to have for Supercross, Shane McElrath, Max Anstey, and Joey Savacci, who have all, of course, parted ways to the team through all the nightmares that have been happening with that situation. Uh, they are back for outdoors. They have Benny Bloss and Freddie Norn on KTM 450s. Um, we'll see how all that shakes down as the summer moves on. Next up is the AEO Power Sports KTM team, which will comprise of Ty Masterpool, Austin Black, and Derek Kelly. Uh, Austin Black and Ty Masterpool were supposed to race for this team in Supercross. Both of them were injured, so we saw a lineup of Derek Kelly and Carson Brown. Carson was just a fill-in. We won't see him outdoors. Might see him do a couple on his own. Uh, Kelly continues with the team for outdoors. Black and Masterpool are both coming back from injury. Black seems to be fairly healthy. Masterpool's a little bit questionable. We've heard he might be riding through some sort of a wrist injury or arm injury of some sort, but... Uh, he is on the bike, but we think that he is uh, also coming in a little bit behind the eight ball. Moving over to the Husqvarna brand, we have the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna factory racing team who will only line up with one 450 rider at Fox Raceway, which is Shane McElrath, who is in on a fill-in deal on Dean Wilson's ride. Uh, it's been announced that he will be on the bike till Dean returns. That could be four rounds, that could be six rounds, eight rounds, who knows. Uh, realistically, it also depends on Malcolm Stewart's situation. He is not racing the opening half of the season has been stated because of his knee injury. We don't know if he will actually line up for any outdoor nationals. If he doesn't, we believe Shane's ride will be extended, uh, regardless of Dean's situation. Dean, of course, is coming off his, uh, rear end injury in Supercross, uh, a really terrible situation overall, uh, for Dean to deal with. Uh, seems like things are healing up maybe a little better than expected, Albeit there was so much blood loss, he's been talking about being quite anemic, and right now we wouldn't expect to see him back till maybe about halfway through the season. So Shane in on the 450, Malcolm and Dean supposedly both out till maybe halfway through the season. Uh, we'll see. You know, Dean should return. Malcolm's questionable. Uh, moving on to the 250 side, we have RJ Hampshire, who we actually quoted as we thought he was going to race the 450. We were pretty dead sure. Then he popped back up on the 250. He did say in an interview with us. Uh, leading into the Fox Raceway National, yes, for four days, he was a 450 guy. And then he tested both bikes back and forth, and the team basically changed their mind and put him back on the 250. So he will ride in FC 250 for the team. Uh, and then he's also joined by Jalex Wool, who got through Supercross healthy. He's good to go. And then Styles Robertson, who is returning from his third injury of the year. If you watch the Grit and Grind Husqvarna series, you'll hear him talk about it. He had quite the list. In December, I believe he had a shoulder injury. Uh, January pelvis, and then he broke his wrist or hand partway through Supercross and had to set up the rest of Supercross. So he is returning to racing for the Outdoor National Series, has a couple weeks on the bike, and should be good to go. And then uh, out the back of the semi uh, on a support deal is Joshua Varese. He's on last year's uh, full factory bike. He is also returning from injury. He had a wrist injury as well, is in for all 12 Outdoor National, and been on the bike for a couple weeks now. Uh, there isn't really any major support teams to speak of for Husqvarna. So we are moving on to the third of the trio of the Austrian brands. The Red Bull Troy Lee Designs Gas Gas Squad. Justin Barsha is in on the 450. All good to go. 250s. Michael Moseman, Pierce Brown, both solid seasons. No injuries to speak of that we're aware of anything major. So they are also both good to go for the opening round. Lastly, we are moving on to the Suzuki brand. We have the HEP Suzuki squad coming in with Justin Bogle and Brandon Hartfram. 
Both riders, again, healthy, good to go. Got through the end of Supercross. Uh, Adam and Technap will not be joining them for outdoors. The team has Adam, again, on a Supercross-only contract, so they run three guys indoors and drop down to two outdoors for the Twisted T HEP Motorsports Suzuki squad presented by Progressive Insurance. That's a mouthful, but really cool to see that many sponsors involved in this program and in the sport. Uh, moving over to the 250 side, we have the Barrex Suzuki squad. Uh, they are normally a four-man team. We believe they are only lining up with one rider at the opening round. Derek Drake is... Good and healthy. Um, we've seen him plenty on the bike here locally. Carson Mumford was scheduled to race outdoors till an injury at uh, Salt Lake. He had a foot injury that is non-weight bearing. We believe he will miss the first somewhere between two to four rounds. We think we'll see him back by round three or four. Um, possibly could could get pushed around five depending on how he heals up, but he will be back here within the first couple of rounds. Uh, we also believe that Dylan Schwartz will be on a similar schedule. He made a post saying he's trying for the opening round, but so far we have heard that he will likely not line up at the first round. We may see him back as early as round two, three, four-ish, similar to Carson, um, but we do not believe we will get to see him at the opening round. And then things have been pretty quiet about their other rider, Preston Kilroy, who had a femur and maybe a pelvis injury. We, believe, we know for sure femur that was pretty bad. Uh, he is not back on the bike, not cleared yet. We don't know if we won't see him till halfway through outdoors or more, um, but his timeline is still a ways out as of right now. So that wraps up our in and out, at least the list of the major teams that we had to talk about today. Uh, if you have any questions on any other riders wondering if they are racing, if they're out, if they're injured, what's going on, throw it in the comments section below and we will try to answer them. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, and see you guys on the next video.